Rafah on the southern border of the Gaza Strip. In March 2015, images of two lion cubs living with a family in a Palestinian refugee camp go viral. The family bought the cubs from a local zoo that was badly damaged and desperate for money after airstrikes the previous year. Four Paws sends veterinarian Dr. Amir Khalil and his team to investigate. There they find the two-month-old cubs in a cramped three-bedroomed apartment with a family of six children. At first glance, the situation appears harmless, but the living conditions will quickly become dangerous to both people and the lions. Four Paws are eager to find a way of rescuing them from their inappropriate private keeping. Three months later, and the cubs have grown significantly. Now local celebrities, they're frequently paraded around the camp and surrounding areas. But as they're getting larger, it's clear their playful biting and games may soon become a problem. Concerned about the potential danger they pose to children in the camp, children's charity UNICEF has requested help from Four Paws. It's not just the risk factor that makes the current arrangement untenable. At five months old, the cubs eat around 40 euros worth of meat per day and are pushing owner Saad al-Jamal to his financial limits. Being located inside the Gaza Strip means there's no easy solution. After months of planning and negotiations, Four Paws has deployed a team to neighboring Jordan and are about to embark on a rescue mission. Dr. Khalil briefs the team on the eve of their departure. He bought two lions with the idea to make a lot of money with these lions. He said, OK, these two lions, I will take them. For example, if there is a football match, they will take the same T-shirt like the players. They are also not in good condition because the nutrition. He don't have the proper food for the animal. The vaccination, there is a lot of also stray animals there like cats and dogs. So it could be a source of infection for the lions or for the kids. It came out very clearly that they will need our help and they will be soon a danger for their surrounding and the lots of children living in this refugee camp. And we were working the last months, like three months or four months, just to be able to do that mission. The plan. The team will take the lions out of Gaza, across the border into Israel, travel 130 kilometers to the Israeli-Jordan border, then another 70 kilometers to a wildlife sanctuary in Jordan. It's an ambitious, daring plan, considering the constant tension between Israel and Palestine's government forces. They consider us we come from the enemy line, and the Israel consider us we come back with the enemy line. For it to work, somehow the Four Paws team has to get the approval of authorities in Israel, Palestine and Jordan. We started to coordinate with some embassies, like the Israel Embassy in Vienna, uh, Austrian Embassy in Tel Aviv, with a Jordanian colleague. We get approval from all of them that we, we are able to do this mission. Additionally, there are documents required for transporting wild animals across international borders. Even the owner don't have any documentation about his lions. I mean, to support any lions, you need CITES permits, which in the Gaza, there is no CITES uh, authorities. Coordinating between Israel and Palestine hasn't been the only challenge. Owner Saad al-Jamal has reportedly been offered $9,000 for the cubs from an unknown buyer. It's against Four Paws policy to buy animals, and to do so would raise suspicions in Israel about the team's true intentions they will have to rely on the goodwill of the owner. They consider if any money go inside and we support whatever, they consider it you support terrorist organization. What we agreed with the man in the last deal and the last meeting, we can cover what he really borrow. The man borrow money to feed the lion. So if somebody pay his credit, he will be willing to give the lions. At this stage, the owner will honor the agreement to donate the lions to Four Paws. However, there's no guarantee he won't change his mind. Even more of a worry for Dr. Khalil is ensuring the safety of his team throughout the mission. You know, we will be in Rafah. Rafah is like two cities. One is from Israel side, one from Egypt side. On the Egypt side, it's really a big war. And this 48 kilometer is like the hell. 
jihadists killed today, I heard about 60 soldiers on this side. Today, don't go on, a, on your own to, to make anything alone. Don't do this. Despite all the risks they face, Dr. Khalil knows he and his team have one thing in their favor. Animal can build bridges between countries. Last time, with the three lions which we took from Gaza, three countries were able to agree on one thing together. So I can imagine these two lions, maybe it could be a message how to build a bridges and to break this borders. Animals can connect people. The planning is in place. Now it's time to act. The rescue contingent is made up of the Four Paws Rapid Response Team and media from several nations. So good luck for all of us. <laughs> Long day. <laughs> Today, Dr. Khalil hopes the team will be able to travel 60 kilometers across Jordan to the Israeli border, and then pass through Israel, entering the Gaza Strip on its northern border at the Erez crossing. They're close to the Israeli border, but before they can cross, they must change vehicles and hand over their passports. If any of their paperwork isn't right, the mission could fail right here. If all goes according to plan, this is where the Cubs will end up. Al Mawa, or the New Hope Center in Amman, Jordan. This is actually for the two new cubs. Uh, we only need to electrify the fence, and then it's ready to go um, and waiting for the cubs. Established in 2010, this wildlife facility is backed by Jordanian royalty. A collaboration between the Princess Alia Foundation and Four Paws, it's an ex-livestock farm that's been converted into a halfway house for rescued animals. Its main role is as a rescue center where medical treatment can be administered and the first stages of rehabilitation can begin. The New Hope Center is home to big cats, bears, wolves, primates and many other animals. And there are plans afoot for big improvements. al -Mawa the sanctuary. It has two functional units, um, the New Hope Center, which basically is the clinic and the, the first two phases of the rehabilitation. And then the second functional unit is Jarash, which is the main sanctuary, the permanent natural enclosures. Obviously, the situation isn't ideal. I mean, even here, the cages are much too small. But from there, the idea came to have a proper sanctuary, which we're working on. And hopefully, that will be ready in a couple of months, and the animals will be in much bigger spaces. The new sanctuary in Jarash Al Mawasuf will be a state of the art facility covering over 140 hectares. It's in a very beautiful area, and in fact, it's an area that's quite endangered because it's one of the last Mediterranean natural forests in the region. And Jordan obviously doesn't have that many trees, so we try and protect them. We see the animals as they're supposed to be, relaxed, uh, and people like to see them. So hopefully, it'll be a, a, a good awareness for people in the region as to how these animals really ought to be kept. The Four Paws team have made it out of Jordan and are crossing into Israel. Their route to the Gaza Strip takes them through the heart of Jerusalem. Wir sind hier gerade an Eris Crossing oder Grenzübergang gekommen und hier fängt den, fängt wieder den richtigen Abenteuer und Herausforderung jetzt. Jetzt geht's richtig los. Next, there is trouble at the Gaza border. I cannot divide the team. At the moment we have to go in one and to leave one. Animal rescue charity Four Paws is sending a team to the Gaza Strip to rescue two lion cubs from a refugee camp. The team has traveled through Jordan and Israel and is approaching the Israeli-Gaza border. The Erez crossing is made up of three checkpoints. First, the Israeli border control, then the Palestine Liberation Organization, and finally, 
the Palestine-controlled immigration point. The crossing has been the scene of much violence. A suicide bomber killed four people here in 2004. Israeli border and military personnel now sit in offices high above ground level, watching through windows and closed-circuit television. The team has a long transit through a caged passage that crosses the buffer zone to reach the Palestinian border. It's a setting that puts all of the Four Paws team on edge. It was a long, long issue to get the permit to enter to Gaza, so it was a really very long day. I will see in war of nerves. <laughs> it could be a lot of political influence on this issue. So I hope to keep quiet till we have the alliance and our ownership. We have clear contract, clear communication, and I hope, yeah, we'll be able to manage. Amir, welcome to Gaza. Dr. Khalil is doing his best to play down the significance of their mission. They still have one checkpoint to go, and he doesn't want to attract the attention of an overzealous security official. The final transit through no man's land is taken by taxi. But the team's progress comes to a sudden halt at Gaza immigration. The border is closed now on yeah. Israel's side. So the colleagues cannot go back. Part of the team allowed to go in. They have the permit to go in. The other cannot go in. And they said it is a security matter. So it is a tough situation at the moment. Yeah. Tough situation. Start to be insecure in the border. Everyone says it's not secure in the evening. It's empty area. Military take over here. And I cannot divide the team. At the moment, we have to go in one and to leave one. The team has little choice but to wait in no man's land and hope the Gaza authorities will eventually issue permits for them to enter. I am here, Vice Director. I come here to help you. We don't want to delay you, but it's not our order. Our order comes from inside, Gaza inside, uh, office. If they there is in and order to allow you to enter, it's OK for us. We like, we like this order. We wait as you. But up, up to now, there is no uh, any order, OK? Dr. Khalil's plan to retrieve the lion cubs tonight is looking very unlikely. And to make matters worse, Saad, the cub's owner, is starting to have doubts. He think like we lie him or the guys lie him because he said to him since two days we are on the way, we are coming, but no one is there, he's waiting. The Four Paws team has spent months convincing Saad to donate the lions. And in the time lost here at the border, there's the very real risk he could change his mind. He's had an offer of 9,000 US dollars for the Cubs. Very tempting for a father of six living in a refugee camp. It's going to be a long night. Most of the crew decide to bed down for the evening. We just got our room for tonight, luxury apartment, five beds, and we hope we get a few hours of sleep now. I think Amir, as the mission leader, will not sleep as something could happen. Even though nothing is likely to happen tonight, Dr. Khalil's experience on major rescue missions in Palestine has taught him to be ready for all eventualities. In 2014, Al-Bisan Zoo in northern Gaza sustained horrific damage from airstrikes during the conflict lasting 51 days. By the time the ceasefire was declared, more than 80 animals had perished. Of the 20 animals still alive, some were wounded and all were traumatized and starving. The situation was desperate and Dr. Khalil led the Four Paws rescue team. We saw here two lions, one male and one female. They survived the war here. One line was with them passed away from the missiles which attacked these enclosures here. As we see, the animal keepers cannot clean this place at all since over 55 days now. The female is apparently pregnant, which means if they have her kids or babies, she will, they will pass away. 
No water, no food. Really very, very bad situation for the animals. The team delivered urgently needed medicine and food to the animals. They also restored the water supply and carried out repairs to enclosures. The lions were relocated to the New Hope Center in Jordan, where they're now recovering. It's early morning, and there's been no change in the local authority's position on letting all of the team into Gaza. So with time running out, Dr. Khalil is forced to make a decision. Kamil just woke me up that we don't have any other chance just to go now only the four post team, pick up the lions, negotiate with the owner, because you will get too late and we will have no chance to get the lions if we wait any longer. Only three members of the rapid response team have permission to enter Gaza. Despite Dr. Khalil's concerns about his team being at risk if they split up, he has no choice because the Israeli border will close for the weekend shortly after midday. It's a little before seven in the morning. I have less than five hours to go to pick up the line and to come here and they will let us go. So I hope this is the truth. With their passports held at the border, Dr. Khalil's hoping the team can get in and out as quickly as possible. The operation is now attracting a lot of attention, and the longer it goes on, the greater the risk one of the local authorities will intervene. The unit travels south to Rafa, where the cubs are being kept. Their route takes them through the heart of the Gaza Strip. It's only an hour's journey, but the scars of decades of war are a constant reminder that this area is still extremely volatile. Conflict can break out at any time. Next, the rescue team may not be able to get out of Palestine. We have a problem. The border is closed, which is really mad. You cannot go here, you cannot go here. After months of preparation, the team finally reaches the Al Shabura refugee camp and sets eyes on the lion cubs. The female cub, Mona, has a large swelling on the back of her head. Max, the male, looks reasonably healthy. Despite Saad al-Jamal being relatively poor, the cubs have been well cared for. But the cost of fresh meat is one of the reasons he's decided they can't continue to keep them. For the border crossing to go smoothly, Saad must sign transfer of ownership papers and other documentation. Letting the cubs go is especially hard for 18-year-old Ibrahim. Along with his father, he's been the main caregiver. Like so many young people in Gaza, he has no work prospects, so the cubs have been a distraction from the futility of daily life, giving him something worthwhile to do. They've probably also given him some status in the local community. Saad and Ibrahim accompany the team back to the border to make their final farewells. The cubs are used to being handled by humans, but they're getting to a size where they could easily inflict a nasty bite. Of course, the 
في المواليد ان انا احتفظ فيها واربيها داخل البيت وعيشها وتصل انها تكون اليفه داخل البيت واثبت للعالم انه الاسد ممكن يعيش داخل البيت ويصل لسن هي عمره قرب على السنه والالفين جدا داخل البيت اكيد صعب كثير لحظه مؤلمه جدا The story has broken in the local press. Journalists and curious bystanders have come to see Max and Mona. For a time, security becomes incredibly relaxed, and there's almost a carnival atmosphere as soldiers and locals come to get a glimpse of the cubs. As a parting gift, Dr. Khalil presents Ibrahim with a book about Lion's Rock, a wildlife sanctuary similar to where Max and Mona will eventually be rehoused. Finally, it's time for the cubs to go. Dr. Khalil is visibly affected. He's come to know the family well and has seen how much the cubs mean to Saad and Ibrahim. The extended goodbye and the attention from media has cost precious time. Now the team are under pressure to get back to the Israeli border before midday. Being a Friday, the border closes early. The heat and commotion are also causing major stress for the cubs. The sooner they can be moved into a quiet, cool setting, the better. Just as the team are about to leave the final Palestinian checkpoint, they hit another roadblock. We are facing again second problem about the coordination with the Israeli to bring the lines. In. They don't know exactly what's needed. So the suggestion now that I have to go inside to coordinate with the vets there to explain and to understand and to go ahead. Dr. Khalil has veterinary passports and a certificate showing the lines were a donation. However, the Israeli authorities are asking for further documentation. Dr. Khalil's calling officials who helped with the previous rescue mission in Gaza. You assist us and you join me and my team during the last lion transfer to, from Gaza to Amman. In order to enter Israel, the lions need health and veterinary certificates from the Palestinian Ministry of Agriculture or a waiver from the Israeli authorities. I don't want to make pressure on you, sir, I really... Yes, I am with the lion. I am with the lion with the cages. They are young, sizes. I take them with my hand. I really, I need your help now. Dr. Khalil is trying to state a case for getting the cubs to a place where they can receive medical attention, particularly the swelling on Mona's head, which needs proper medical assessment. I hope that the Israel side and the Agriculture Ministry Department here, which are in contact with us, to assist us to issue uh, a quick permit for urgent need and urgent medical care need for these two lions. While Dr. Khalil continues to appeal to the authorities, the hours quickly pass by, and Israeli officers are closing down for the weekend. Thank you, sir. We have a problem. Yes. Say it's close 1.30. I said, but the team are here since 15 before 12. We, we give the passport 15 before 12. The official communication came. The border is closed. You have to wait here till they open the border, which will be on Sunday, which is really mad. We see still people coming out who don't understand. This is the rules. But at the end of the day, the military decide here and they say the border is closed. And it's a Shabbat. So that's it where we are now. Yeah, that's it. Shabbat is the seventh day of the Jewish week and their day of rest. Starting on Friday evening and finishing Saturday night, the Israeli border will be closed until Sunday. For the Four Paws team, it means 36 hours waiting in limbo at the Gaza border and that could be disastrous for the Cubs. But just when it looks like the rescue mission is doomed to failure, Dr. Khalil receives another phone call. 
This was the Minister for Foreign Affairs here in, in Gaza. Yeah. And he just called to confirm they will let us pass. We have just to leave our passport at the border. And Sunday morning when we leave, we take the passport back. The entire team will now go back to Gaza. Although it's the opposite direction to where they want to go, it's a better option than two nights in no man's land. The team are being sent to a hotel in Gaza City, where they must stay under house arrest until they have permission to enter Israel. For Dr. Khalil, any hopes of keeping a low profile on the operation have now been dashed. Checking in two lions raises more than a few eyebrows at the upmarket Gaza Hotel. Fortunately, the hotel manager is willing to accept the unusual guests. Their room, a small garden area behind his office. Sie werden hier zumachen mit einem Abzaun jetzt, die, den Direktor, ja. Und die können jetzt frei lassen in der nächsten Stunde, für die nächsten zwei Tage, das ist besser. Erst einmal ein bisschen los von diesen Ketten und wollen Wasser trinken. Die haben fast nichts getrunken den ganzen Tag. Es das heißt, sie sind müde für uns. Sie wollen was essen. It's been a long day for all involved. Not least Dr. Khalil, who's now been awake for over 36 hours. With the lions safe, the team can eat and rest and figure out the next move in the morning. Coming up, can they get Mona to safety in time? He's very sick, he's very pain. The following day, and Mona and Max are being waited on hand and foot by hotel manager Basil Shawa. Very nice guest. Beautiful animals. We don't have places for the animals, but we can manage to put him, them in this small garden here, and we keep him safe. Basil's also playing it safe by keeping them well fed. I saw the doctor yesterday, they feed them, and I no idea if they are stomach full, they don't eat people. <laughs> Some house guests are impossible to please, though. The cubs were brought up on chicken, and it appears good quality beef is not to their taste. It looks as if they'd rather stick to what they know. Inside the hotel, Dr. Khalil is meeting with the local coordinator for the rescue mission. He's heard that some locals aren't happy about it. Mohamed is one of our main contact person. Obviously, our colleagues who are supporting our mission makes the logistic for us. And it was regarding some troubles with some guys which are not happy that we are here and that we take the lines out. They think, okay, we export animals, we make the territory are empty from the precious wild animals. These guys are angry and they will try to stop and do everything possible to stop us to leave the strip. This is worrying news. Dr. Khalil and the team can only sit tight and hope it doesn't get out of hand. In the meantime, he finally gets an opportunity to inspect the cubs. This cub stick from the mom is about four weeks age, so they don't have really the proper colostrum or from the milk of the mom, which is really difficult in a way. It's not really the proper immune system they have. They don't have the proper nutrition in the last months. So I, you can see also the skin problems here. They need special medical care in the coming weeks. The proper vaccination. They never were visited by a vet, but this one, as you see, is really weak. Dr. Khalil is particularly concerned about Mona's head injury. Hey. Yeah, he's very sick, he's very pain. It's water under something hit him. But what is also why is it don't eat today what I understood. A check of the cub's reflexes suggests Mona's swelling is either a symptom or the cause of other problems. I think you have a serious problem because you don't really react like the other lions, if you see, with the eye. You see it? You see this one? 
You can, you can see his head and he's, he's, no, he, no. he's aggressive. Sure. So care, he's afraid. And the pupil opening reflex is not very clear. I will bring later in the evening like my lights and try to check him probably. The enforced stopover in Gaza gives Dr. Khalil the opportunity to meet with a Palestinian government representative. He is representing the Minister for Agriculture here in Gaza Strip. The main point was how to solve the problem of wild animals which are living in private zoos and private captivity in Gaza for long term. There are around seven privately run zoos in war-torn Gaza. Many of them are struggling to provide food and medicines for their animals. On a previous trip in April 2015, Dr. Khalil and the Four Paws team witnessed horror conditions at the Khan Yunus Zoo in the central Gaza Strip. It had run out of money to pay its zookeepers and fallen into serious disrepair. Cages were full of waste and debris, and animals that had died of starvation had been stuffed and put back on display. This is very bad to show kids or children uh, this way. I know the situation and the financial situation is not good, so we bring food for three months. We treated the lioness, which is here, we succeed to treat some other animal and vaccinate a lot of animals. The meeting is to discuss an offer by Four Paws to help create a public park with species-appropriate conditions if the government can provide a site. They confirm they are able to confiscate all this animal and to put them in a place and to stop this problem with wild animal kept in private captivity. The government official also has good news regarding the veterinary certificates for the cubs. The proper documentation which should be issued today, latest early morning tomorrow, for the Lions Cups to be moved to Jordan. This should be coordinated with the Israel Authority. Just when it seems progress is finally being made, there is more bad news. The Palestinian authorities have become suspicious about the group's intentions in Gaza and have summoned them to an interview. I spoke in between with somebody from Ministry of Interior which is the man in charge in this case. Sure, he, he was not happy about all the situation, what happened. He said we create a lot of problems. We have to meet him personally tomorrow morning. All the group, without exception. The main issue for him, he have to clarify why foreigners and journalists don't coordinate with the Office of Media in Gaza. Why, when they inform the group to leave the border the first day, why they slept at the border? One thing is now certain. The team won't be getting out of Gaza tonight. With time to kill, Dr. Khalil has made a call to Rafa and invited Saad and Ibrahim to come by the hotel. After several stressful days on the move with strangers, Mona and Max are clearly overjoyed to see some familiar faces. Despite the strong bond between them, Dr. Khalil is convinced it's right to be taking the cubs away. I feel very honest happy that, that I see them together again. It's nice, they like to play, but they play their game. And they're still wild animals. If they get angry, I believe they will be very, very wild. And when they get adult and more stronger, more powerful, this is really risky. They are not pet animals. They are still wild animals. This is the perfect opportunity for Dr. Khalil to find out if Saad and Ibrahim know how Mona came about her head injury. He imagined it could be from the zoo where it was, because he kept it sometimes at the zoo. And this is about two weeks now like this. Saad and Ibrahim leave, knowing their cubs are in good hands. 
Next, the rescue team have a chance to get across the border. There is a hope. There is a hope. We can go. The team were up at 8 a.m. to meet Palestinian officials at the office of the Interior Ministry. No cameras were allowed inside. It, it was a lot of explanation, uh, at least the apology about what happened. Suspect journalist report that there is ISIS in Gaza, which is not the true, and we're aware that some of you come and exactly at 4 o'clock uh, that the border will be closed. So it was a lot of misunderstanding. But Dr. Khalil still can't afford to relax. There remains the possibility of intervention from the group opposed to the removal of the lions. Back at the hotel, the team swings into action as permits from the Ministry of Agriculture arrive. The team is ready, and really we are wishing to pass through you with your assistance and our colleague waiting. With all the paperwork now in place, the team is just awaiting the final go-ahead from Israel. There is a hope. There is a hope. Five minutes we know, but we will not wait this five minutes. We have to go prepare our things, prepare ourselves for the trip. The team scrambled to pack and be ready to leave. Who will carry me with Misa Lions or the cages? Let's go. and Mona have been given a low dose of sedative in their drinking water to keep them calm for the last step of their journey. This is where the team was held up two days earlier, but now they have all the necessary paperwork. waiting to go into the Israeli part of the Ares crossing. It looks like that everything is well organized. We're contact, in contact with the Israeli side, with the military and the coordination of the crossing, and everything will be fine, hopefully. some small sedative in the water, it's still quiet, this is fine. And we still have the trip till Jordan, but I hope we will manage. Wait, 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 wait. The journey through Israel is in stark contrast to the scenes the team witnessed during their time in Gaza. At the Jordanian border, they finally meet up with the Amman team, who've had an anxious wait over the last few days. You know, it's been like, are they coming today? They're not coming today. Guys are ready since the morning. We were waiting. And then, you know, uh, the message is saying, no, we're not coming today. It seems tomorrow. Half an hour then later, you know, you say, no, we're coming today. Finally, the team arrives at the New Hope Center in Amman. Princess Alia has come to greet the team and welcome her newest residents. <laughs> This is the first time Dr. Khalil has seen the Cubs' new home. This is nice. It's perfect. It's well done. We, well done. The other way around. These tentative first steps mark the end of the journey and the start of a new life for Max and Mona. Salam, <laughs> salam. 
to see some creature come from a not ideal situation and be able to be part of a relief for it is, is, is really a huge pleasure. Hopefully they'll now be able to become proper lions as opposed to pets. For the entire team, it's moments like this that make the sleepless nights and dangerous work all worth the effort. These success stories, when you get these animals out and put them in the sanctuaries, prove them a secure life, this is the, the best ever. Very, very happy that the lions will start a new life. They don't need to be more as show or actress on the beach. They don't need more for one or two shekels just to get a picture with somebody. They don't need to sleep with the children. They can be with each other and they can grow and they are wild animals. And I'm happy they will be just lions. The following morning, with the cubs more settled, Dr. Khalil can finally remove the last trace of Mona and Max's private keeping. And as the curious cubs begin to explore their new environment, they make an exciting discovery. They're not alone. I'm very, very curious what's going on on the other place, they try to communicate, the line from the other side try to communicate. I see also the like their place, they're really discovering it. And I'm happy that the female, she's in much better condition. She's more active, moving, and this is a very good sign, very good sign. In a future episode, we'll follow the cubs as they take the final step of their journey into the newly completed Al-Mawasuf Animal Sanctuary. <laughs>